My guys say we're good to go, so we are radio entrepreneurs, and we're back on the air. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Davis. Uh, again, I want to thank our hosts who built our studios, MTP Software, the leader in sports CRM, uh, and uh, we're doing just great here back in these studios. And our next guest, Mike Stone, Pete Whiting, co-founders, Ganar Company, or NAR Company. Yes, the NAR Company. The NAR Company. So tell us about NAR Company. Yeah, the NAR Company is a software consultancy based in Boston. Uh, We build web and mobile applications for growing companies um, that ranges from small startups to the state of Massachusetts. We work across industries, um, and uh, we are... are, uh, foundational product is our key offering in which we are building products from the ground up and uh, building, you know, sustainable, scalable, reliable products that you can really grow a team around and, and scale uh, and extend as, as you continue to build your product. So what type of products would those be? So we build everything from custom web applications and mobile apps as well. Okay. So everything from uh, a mobile app for a company called Keepsake, which is a baby journaling app that was on Shark Tank recently, to uh, to the Uber and background check system for the state of Massachusetts. Okay. So that's a little bit more specific for me. So h- how'd you guys get uh, hooked up? What's your history together? How'd you get together? Uh, we used to work together at a company called Miu Health along with our uh, co-founder, Nick Maloney. Um, and, uh, you know, started, started from there, uh, MU Health was going through some turbulent times and, uh, you know, kudos to them. They were very transparent about everything that was going on. And through that, we were able to identify, uh, Nick had some background in software consulting and we were able to, uh, kind of, uh, get our, our foot in the ground and identify some early clients to work on just kind of nights and weekends sort of stuff and then uh, eventually move into a full-time role. And uh, the, the good part to us about the turbulent times at Mio Health was there was a great stable of software engineers on the market. It's a very difficult hiring market, and we were able to hit the ground running with a group of engineers that we knew and, and trusted and could establish a culture right away and build some really great products for our clients. Great. Uh, so uh, let's break you guys up now a little bit, Mike uh, and Pete. Uh, could both of you give me a, a sense of your backgrounds and how you sort of evolved into this sort of world? Sure. Yeah. I. Um, I. Uh, That's well, Mike first. <laughs> right. I got it right. I, I just said it wrong. Right. Uh, sure. So I started off my career as an engineer. Um, shortly after about after about three years of of an engine of being an engineer, decided to uh, pursue sort of a business degree out on the West Coast. Uh, after getting my MBA at UCLA, then um, went on and joined Deloitte Consulting uh, for seven years between LA and Boston, uh, doing a lot of strategy consulting and, and growth analysis for companies. Uh, and then Good training, Deloitte. Yes, it was fantastic. So right. uh, really enjoyed it, loved it. Uh, and uh, after, like many uh, consultants with a, a spouse that works full time and a couple young kids and traveling all the time just became unsustainable. So joined Vistaprint. Uh, here in Boston, which was an amazing experience there. I really got to uh, dive into Fast helping growth the run. company for a while. A- absolutely. We were on right. a rocket ship. Uh, when my first job was actually trying to figure out how we actually triple the size of the business in, in five years, which was a really exciting strategic right. project, but also got to really help me know the business. Through that experience, I actually got to uh, really work with a lot of our um, uh uh, businesses in other geographic areas, and through that, actually got to move down to Sydney, Australia, to help turn around the Asia Pacific business where growth had slowed. Um, after th- a three-year stint there with my family, which was an amazing experience, uh, came uh, returned back to Boston and joined a number of startups, and that's where Mike and I um, first uh, got to work together at, at MeU Health. Well, Pete, that's a pretty exciting story. I'd love to hear more, but I can't ask you some stuff about uh, Australia, but I'll do that offline. Uh, Mike, what's your story? Uh, I actually started off in the in the restaurant industry. I was uh, managing a, a bar in Manhattan uh, right out of college and really got thrown in the deep end there. We, we had, it was right outside Madison Square Garden. It had five revenue centers, a roof deck, a patio, a main floor, a lounge, and uh, a lot of staff, a lot of, lot of back of house and front of house staff. And it was a really interesting experience and, and I learned a lot about uh, management in the restaurant industry. 
Um, I left because I got drafted to play uh, professional lacrosse back in Boston. So I came back here um, from the area and, and, and came back and uh, played professional lacrosse for six years. Um, during that time, I also had, had some other jobs. I, I um, started a, a couple companies, one in lacrosse doing camps and clinics, another uh, helping nonprofits uh, with their donations. Um, that nonprofit company helped me kind of transition into technology. I started teaching myself how to code uh, to build our, our site um, and then ended up uh, becoming a, a full-time software engineer after my lacrosse career uh, at MU Health where, where I met Pete. Got to be in good shape to play lacrosse. I used to be, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be compared to what? <laughs> uh, you know, you're looking around a room. I think you're still a one. You still are a B. Uh, but also can be a rough sport too. You could get hurt pretty bad in lacrosse. Yeah, abs absolutely. Actually, uh, ended my career when I tore my ACL uh, uh, towards the end there. But um, I, I was lucky where you know it's a very physical sport. A lot of bumps and bruises, but nothing major aside from that. Stuff I'd like to ask you too, but I'm not supposed to get into it now. So you know, you're in an industry where I think a lot of uh, Let's say your target doesn't understand the differences of what they're buying and uh, the benefits. You know, I, I might be one of those. And uh, does that make it extra hard for you? I mean, I know, look, I have a management consulting firm, and I feel like people don't really understand management consulting. Yeah, I think that there's, there's a couple of different ways we sort of uh, approach things. We, we kind of have two different clients. So one often is a startup. Uh, there's a founder, maybe a co-founder. They have a great idea but haven't sort of, and they know the requirements, they know the market they want to go after, but they're not exactly sure how to sort of build their first foundational product, as Mike mentioned. And, and there, we actually have what we call an offering called a design and discovery phase, where we work closely with uh, those founders to define, okay, what are the key user personas? What's the key functionality? And then for a relatively you know, inexpensive initial cost, able to actually build out all the screens with our designer to show exactly what all the user flows would be. And, and that's actually a very inexpensive way to build a, a click demo or a prototype. And, and that's often a great way to start. Uh, whereas with uh, some of the larger clients that we work with, whether it's um, Level Up or Salsify that already have an existing team, they are struggling with hiring. Right now there's over 50, 15,000 software engineering um, job openings in the greater Boston area. It's taking everyone three, six months to hire someone and we help fill that gap to add velocity to their business. Is that just software jobs open or software engineering alone? Software engineering alone. That's just software engineering alone. That's that's an unbelievable statistic. I talked to client a client yesterday about how hard it is. I said monkeys can get jobs in Massachusetts <laughs> right now, and he was like looking at me weird. And I just sort of believe that. Now you guys have extraordinary experience. How do you get that across to customers? So, so it's really there? through it's really through conversations and trying to meet face to face. And unfortunately, we the co the company was founded in 2015, so we have four years of experience with a number of, uh, of very large clients, and we're we're also happy to take them through our experience. We're used to working across the spectrum with individuals that are extremely tech savvy to ones that are this is their first sort of software project that they're working on. So we're really comfortable in in dealing with across that spectrum. Uh, everybody. Uh, I'm speaking with uh, Mike Stone and Pete Whiting, uh, co-founders of NAR Company. Uh, how'd you get the name? I had a feeling you were going to ask that. It's, uh, that's oftentimes uh, you know, an, an early topic when, when we're talking with folks. And uh, the long story is that uh, naming a company is a very challenging thing to do, as, as, as you know well. And uh, I have a it, consulting firm called Mage. Believe me, I've had a lot of questions over the years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, can be, it can be really tough. And, and to, to add to just the challenge of naming in general, finding one that has a domain name that's available is, is uh, extra difficult. Even so. for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but why NAR? And so we I mean, I like the name. I can play with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what we wanted. I mean, our, our internal motto is kind of, you know, uh, we take our work very seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. And so NAR is kind of a play on gnarly. And, and, and the whole thing is that we, we solve our clients' gnarly problems. And, and you don't so, dress up at Halloween all those p pirates. No, no we don't. You don't do walk that. around with pig like, <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't do that, but we do have like, you know, a, a, a very open and friendly office. And, and we're, 
you know, uh, joking with each other throughout the day. But when it comes down Starts to doing with our the work, name. yeah, when it when it comes down to doing our work, we want to solve the gnarly problems and, and we want to help our, our clients with uh, uh, with good solutions. Look, I don't want to talk about me too much. It's not about me, but I am a big believer in names that actually have meanings. And I think yours does. So did mine. My original partner was a professional Scrabble player, played on a Scrabble circuit. And Mage comes from the Magi, the wise men who gave advice to kings and queens to mm. run their kingdoms more effectively. Mm. And I and once he explained it to me, I went, oh, yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> so I, I get it. I like it. And uh, I won't forget you. Yeah, and yeah. I would say you're the kind of company that our listeners should be talking to. You really have a, a special sauce. We, we love learning about uh, different companies, their industries. Uh, we, we obviously bring software expertise, but we really rely on our clients to bring their industry expertise. We're, we're industry agnostic, so we've worst, worked across healthcare, consumer, obviously sort of government work. Uh, and, and we love learning about it. It's, it's such a fun job to be able to learn about a company, explore, and there are so many new companies that we're discovering every day in the greater Boston area. That's the way I feel about my consulting, and I feel that way about your business. It's an exciting business, and uh, it's not something that I'm tactically good at. Uh, guys, if someone's looking for you, want to give us the contact data? Sure. They can uh, reach out to us on our website. It's uh, T-H-R-E-G-N-A-R.C-O. The NAR.co. Uh, they can also reach us via phone at 617 710 3317 and would love to talk to anyone interested That's in building software. Very unusual that someone under the age of 50 gave a phone number out. <laughs> you can usually draw a line in the sand. Uh, so you have an old soul? <laughs> well, I'm not He's that pushing much. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show again. Remind everybody this is Jeffrey Davis from Radio Entrepreneurs. We'll be right back. <laughs> 